But anyway, he pushed and he poked and he pushed and until I was, you know, slamming and screaming and I had something sharp and Hi guys, how are you doing today? My name is Kidney J. The J stands for jerk because my kidneys are a pair of jerks. And that clip I wanted to put at the very beginning so I could set the tone of this video. Uh, Candy released a video yesterday titled Double Chicken Pad Thai from the Memory Thai Mukbang with TMI Therapy Chat. And boy, what an appropriate title. Lots of memories with Thomas, of course, we're going to get into all that, but let me also warn you that this video is laden with some pretty tough subjects, so trigger warning, as well if you're experiencing any sort of mental health crisis, the numbers on the screen um, may be useful for you, or if you know someone who is going through a mental health crisis, those numbers are for you as well. Now first, let me just say, Candy, from one prickly pear to another, please accept my hug. As well, anyone listening, accept my hug. Um, if you're going through it right now, uh, well, I'm gonna ask you if you could show some love to my button, subscribe, like, leave a comment down below. Always love hearing from you. So let's get into this one. So starting it off, Candy did do a midweek community tab, letting her subscribers know, A, there would be no video, and secondly, that she had not worked up the gumption to make a phone call to her new primary care provider. Um, and she does, she talks about it in the video as well. So here's that clip. And again, uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's Wednesday. And as of now, I still have not made a doctor's appointment yet. I'm still psyching myself up. And I still keep telling myself things that I need to get done before I can allow myself to leave the apartment. So Candy hasn't left her apartment in about two years and that was to get medical intervention. Um, and she has anxiety surrounding it. And uh, we we find out more why in coming up. So like I said, my therapy appointment went well. We talked a lot about, you know, what I was going to go over with my doctor once I get to see her mm. and the process that it's going to take me to get to that point. <laughs> Obviously, you know, I need to do blood work and all this stuff to see if Ozempic would even be a good fit for me. Or if there's other things that I could do similarly. I talked to her about fears where it comes to that too, you know. My job is eating, pretty much. <laughs> so, I'm going to have to be, if I'm on something like that, I'm going to have to be careful what I'm eating and how much I'm eating of it. Because I'm seeing like stuff from people that say, you lose the weight on Ozempic because you can't keep any food down. And I'm like, well, that's not good. <laughs> and I said, well, what are these people trying to eat that they're not able to keep it down, you know? Okay, I'll give my thoughts about the Ozempic in a second, but just how prescient this video is right now, considering Nick Cotto Avocado's weight loss and how it was his career to eat as well. Um, Candy talking to her therapist about, listen, if I get healthy, take the Ozempic out of the picture. How is this going? To, how am I going to live? How am I going to make a living? Um, yeah. So, you know, obviously I think we're putting the cart before the horse here. Um, because yeah, she needs to get the baseline blood work done. She needs to make sure her liver is healthy. Um, thyroid's healthy before she starts the Ozempic. Ozempic girlies or guysies, let me know uh, your experience on Ozempic. So, I mean, there was a lot of other things that I talked to my therapist about today, but I got a little emotional. You know, I started talking about grief and complicated feelings, uh, you know, associated with the grief that I'm experiencing right now or you know what what happened 
February, I wasn't fully on track. I had gained 10 pounds, but I had been kind of holding steady since like the end of October, you know, 380 to 390. So I wasn't doing too bad once I got off of carnivore. But then Thomas passed in December. And, you know, I kind of hung in there for a while. And about February, you know, I'm looking at my fitness pal recently because I've, I've, I've weighed myself. I, I know where I'm at right now pretty much. And basically in February, that's where the, the kind of straight line started going. I haven't gained all the weight that I lost back, but the majority of it. So Candy's not giving her weight here, but she's saying she, she gained back most of the weight she did lose last year on her carnivore diet. Um, I've said this before, you know, you have to get the right, the mind right for the body to follow. I've experienced it myself. When you are holding sort of internal grief, sadness, trauma, it starts to manifest in physical ways, in very tangible ways. And Candy saw it pretty much in black and white in her fitness app. She saw where the spike happened. Uh, me, it happens with blood, blood pressure and it happens with appetite for me but uh those of you who don't know who thomas is because hmm, thomas is coming up um who the real thomas was anyways thomas aka hungry hippie was um candy's boyfriend she lived with him for a while and he introduced her to this lifestyle mukbanging as well as a uh, prawn he suffered a life-changing stroke in 2017 and passed in December 2023. Two decades of stuff to unpack there. Whew. You know, because in many ways, the man saved my life, gave me a new life. But it was one of those, you know, deal with the devil kind of things. You know, survival, you know, kind of the, this is what you have to do <laughs> to live, basically. Oh, man. So, yeah. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of therapy for me to, like, figure out exactly what is going on you know exactly what i'm feeling and basically <sighs> why i hate myself because <laughs> i don't like to think that i do but you know it's obvious that i'm definitely not being good to myself most of the time so people with eyes are, you know, can see, yeah, Candy, we know you are not kind to yourself. We see that reflected back. However, when you're in it, you might not notice your neglect of personal needs. You might notice the constant dialogue of negative self-talk, and you may tolerate toxic or abusive relationships. Um, and we're going to get into it right now um, about Thomas. <sighs> Like back in the day, I used to go shopping with Thomas and I would get triggered in some sort of way and I start seeing things that freaked me out or just got these feelings and he would be trying to help me and then he would get irritated at me and he'd start cussing at me and and he had, when he started cussing at me and, and, you know, making me feel bad because I was panicking and having emotions and things, then I would, like, escalate and I'd be screaming and cussing and, and Walmart, you know, just losing it. So, I mean, I'm... What I have to remember is that when I'm out by myself, 
you know, or with somebody that I trust. And I always said I trusted Thomas, but. And Candy often defended Thomas in her videos. Um, it looks like now she's coming to terms with, you know, maybe um, she didn't trust this man after all. It's like he kind of had this little sadistic thing where he would poke me until I was, you know, losing it, like breaking things, screaming, crying, hurting myself. And he'd just laugh. Thought it was so freaking funny. Like, there she is. It's like, yep, <laughs> there she is. You know, and I, I try to remind myself that I don't have somebody in my life that will do that to me now. Nobody's going to poke at me until I lose control or lose myself or black out or whatever. Oh, so thank goodness she doesn't have anyone in her life anymore externally pressing those buttons, but one could argue she presses her own buttons. Um, I made a video last week about her being trapped inside her apartment. Um, and as cliche as it sounds, we know the key to get out of that is she can only unlock it from the inside. And coming up guys, trigger warning, uh, talk of self-harm. A therapist asked me when the last time it was that I hurt myself physically you know and I said well other than like overeating and all that kind of stuff or you know eating stuff that's bad for me and things like that I mean I haven't like myself or anything like that since 2017 literally just a couple months before Thomas had a stroke. And I told her it was the silliest thing in the world that he went at me about. Yeah, I registered to vote that year and he just went off on me. Because there was like a risk of getting called to jury duty and it's like, it's not like I can't get out of jury duty. I mean, look at me. <laughs> But anyway, he pushed and he poked and he pushed and, and until I was, you know, slamming and screaming and I had something sharp and bled myself. But I haven't done it since. So guys, I'm going to end it here. I implore you to go watch Candy's video to get the full scope of it. These were just um, highlights and clips that I want to touch upon. But it looks like she's working through things in therapy. Um, you know, she lost someone she, she loved. She, she often, you know, put him on a pedestal, almost painted him as a hero now she seems to come to the realization that maybe that wasn't the case and she's working through it anyways guys thank you for watching appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one bye now